What is frame data? How can I win when they just overwhelm me with attacks? What do I need to do to win more consistently? If you have ever asked any of these questions, then you might not know about frame data. Frame data essentially is information about the animations used in fighting games, telling us how fast or slow these moves are, how risky they are to use, and extra properties. To begin to understand this, we must know that a frame is a picture or an image being displayed. More and more images are then displayed after each other, like a flipbook, and so creates an animation. Tekken has 60 of these images being constantly displayed every second. We measure animations by how many frames it takes, as by counting in fractions or decimals would be too complex. Every character in Tekken has a move list, and each move goes through three animation stages when performed. Startup, Active, and Recovery. Startup refers to the amount of time it takes for an attack animation to merge after the inputs. Active refers to the time that the move would be dealing damage on contact. This is a small window of time, so we generally don't pay attention to the exact number of frames. And recovery refers to the time it takes for your character to return to his or her normal blocking stance. The types of recovery you should be most familiar with are block, hit, and counter hit. Characters cannot move or block during any part of these three stages unless the animation is cancelled or finishes. So when you press an attack, you always go from a blocking state to startup frames, active frames, recovery, and then back to blocking. So if we use an example, Asuka's forward 2 Demon Slayer takes exactly 17 frames to start up. Most moves in Tekken range between 8 to around about 30 frames. 8 being fast and 30 being slow. Faster moves are generally more safer, apply pressure, and chip health. Whereas slow moves would hit harder and may knock down or launch opponents. Keep in mind there are exceptions, and some moves can take up to 30 all the way up to 100s to start up. Now by knowing this move takes about 17 frames to become harmful, how do we use this information to give us an advantage in a match? Firstly, we already know there are faster moves as 17 frames is on the slower side. After playing against this Asuka for a while, we have noticed she likes to throw out this move quite often. Why don't we challenge the opponent by using a move that takes less than 17 frames? Lily's 1 plus 2 takes 12 frames to start up, so when used at the exact same time as Asuka's forward 2, Lily's move comes out first and thus is the one that inflicts damage. An active frame that collides with a startup frame is called a counter hit. Landing counter hits can be advantageous as it not only means you interrupt the opponent's attack and deal damage, but counter hits deal more damage and may include extra properties. Some of these may include increasing your opponent's recovery time after being hit, or getting launched in the air, allowing you to deal even more damage. Let's say we knew Asuka was gonna use a forward 2, and decided to use a slower move, but earlier. Lily's down forward plus 3 is a 20 frame startup move, but launches on counter hit leading to a combo. Most of the time, counter hits are landed when a player thinks an attack string has finished, and tries to attack in between, but is then hit. Sometimes it can also be baited out when you get a feel of your opponent's attacking rhythm or make them feel like it's their turn to attack when it's actually not. Ah, you're too slow using the 1 plus 2 and now both of you get hit. When an active frame meets another active frame, we call this a trade, because both players are hit and receive damage. It's also good to know that trades cause both attacks to turn into counter hits. So if we look at a situation of Asuka using her back 4 and Lily using her back 1 at the same time, which both have a startup of 17 frames, we can instantly see that Lily's move does not launch on counter hit where Asuka's move does and so this exchange does not favor Lily. There is also a situation in where an active frame collides with a recovery frame. In this instance, we call that a punish. What does this mean? Well. Each move in Tekken has a certain amount of recovery frames, and being attacked during this time results into guaranteed damage. Most competitive players rely on this method to win matches as it is the safest way to deal damage. Let's go back to the situation with Lily and Asuka. Consistently getting a counter hit on forward 2 can be difficult, especially if the player changes the timing or adds different attacks in between. Let's play patiently and try to block punish it. Both Lily and Asuka begin at 0 frames. Asuka uses forward 2, which takes 17 frames to start up. Once Lily blocks this attack, Asuka is then at negative 18. Now Asuka has to wait 18 frames to go to 0, which will allow her to move, attack, and block again. But Lily on the other hand, can do anything she wants in this 18 frame window. Lily can answer back with an attack of her own. 
One, two takes 10 frames to start up, so in 10 frames time, Lily has dealt damage to Asuka who is still in recovery. Now you might be thinking, there's still an 8 frame difference, and you would be right. Different moves have different recovery times, which some moves may be more dangerous when blocked. Notice how we can slowly use slower and slower moves, and they will still hit because they are all under 18 frames. Eventually we get to Lily's down 3 plus 4, which launches Asuka for a full combo. This is what we call an optimum punish, as it is the most damaging guaranteed outcome for the situation. Notice how we used frame data to ensure that one exchange of the match has become in our favor. Punishing your opponent is always good, but be careful as using moves that take longer than the recovery window can lead to you being punished instead. For example, Lily blocks Asuka's forward 2, which we know is minus 18, and if we try to use Lily's forward forward 2, which is 20 frames to start up, Asuka will be able to use 18 of the 20 frames to recover and be able to block it. Unfortunately, Lily's forward forward 2 is also minus 17 on block, so Asuka can then be mashing on forward 2 after blocking to punish Lily back for using that move incorrectly. Another thing to keep in mind is while standing moves are mostly used to block punish lows as moving between stances can take up valuable frame time, and thus adding additional animations to moves makes them slower. It is possible to do an instant while standing, but doing them consistently can be difficult. Another way to deal with a move like forward 2 is by using linear and 3 dimensional movement to induce a whiff. A whiff is a term used when an attack misses. Making your opponent whiff is even more advantageous than blocking, as you don't have a recovery animation and therefore can punish almost instantly. Dashing back and forward, sidestepping and walking are used in order to create these opportunities. On the contrary, to moves that give you a disadvantage when blocked, there are also moves that do the exact opposite. We describe these moves as plus on block, with a number to represent the amount of frames. Different moves can give different amounts of advantage or disadvantage. It can also depend if your opponent blocks, gets hit, or gets counter hit. Moves that are plus on block can help you apply pressure and set up counter hit opportunities. An example of this is Lily's down forward plus 3. It adds an extra 3 frames of recovery on block and forces Asuka into a crouching position. So if Asuka wants to retaliate with her while standing 4, which is 11 frames, her fastest while standing move, right after blocking she has to take 3 frames of recovery and then another 11 frames for that move. If Lily at the same time uses her standing 4 move, which is 12 frames, Lily will always come out first in this situation and counter hit Asuka. As it is either Asuka using a 14 frame move against Lily's 12 frame move, or is Asuka's 11 frame move against Lily's 9 frame move. The 3 frame difference is always shared between the two players, it would never be a 14 frame move against a 9 frame move. You can think of it like a scale, whoever is negative, the other is positive. Keep in mind that the plus frame advantage doesn't mean anything if you don't press any buttons. They can't land a counter hit when you don't attack. Play patiently, duck the high, block the low, break the throw, backdash out. There's always a way to answer back and take in. Plus frames can also increase depending on what range the move hits at. We know that Lily's down forward 3 is plus 3 on block, but when blocked at max range, it gets an extra 2 frames making it plus 5. We can see this when we slow it down. And notice that at max range, down forward 3 has gone through more of its animation compared to it hitting at close range. This can also apply to moves that have pushback. Asuka's back 3 is unsafe, but the pushback can make it sometimes hard to punish. Sometimes the frame advantage can be so high that you get a free move. Asuka's full crouch down forward plus 2 on counter hit puts Asuka at plus 16, which she can then use extra moves making into a combo. Overall, we can see how knowing and not knowing frame data can seriously change an outcome of a match. Although most people would recommend learning about it, it's not a must. Some high level players play by instinct and experience. But knowing how to understand frame data can help you learn faster, without going through the trial and error process. You can then focus on performing the punish instead of finding what the punish is for that particular move. Frame data is also a way to balance Tekken. Moves can be really good in one way, but also very bad in another. This makes playing Tekken not only a game of reactions and skill, but also strategy. Making active choices of moves and placing them carefully. Players can't just go full party mode non-stop without paying a price. Making sure you play at the strengths of your character while avoiding your opponents. I hope this video has helped you broaden your knowledge of Tekken frame data, as I also had trouble understanding it when I first started playing Tekken seriously. 
Subscribe if you like my content and let us get better at Tekken together. Thank you all for watching.